untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green paradoxical combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features both a Paradox Engine as well as Paradoxical Outcome, a 4-mana instant from Kaladesh Remastered, saying return any number of target and non-land non-token permanents you control to their owner's hands. And then we get to draw a card for each permanent returned to our hand this way. So ideally we want to combo Paradoxical Outcome with a lot of cheap permanents, especially permanents that generate mana, because then they will essentially pay for themselves once we replay them and then outcome will draw us into a ton of cards hopefully including a copy of paradox engine which is another important piece of the puzzle a five mana legendary artifact saying whenever we cast a spell untap all non-land permanents we control so paradox engine also combines quite nicely with any permanents that generate mana because then we can float a whole bunch of mana cast a spell untap all our permanents to make more mana and potentially draw our entire deck combined with cards like paradoxical outcome and then eventually we can win the game with our two copies of Aetherflux Reservoir, a 4-mana artifact saying whenever we cast a spell, we gain one life for each spell we've cast this turn, and that will also backtrack any spells we've already cast, and then we can pay 50 life at some point to deal 50 damage to any target, which will win us the game on the spot. Now we could also be playing Jace Wielder of Mysteries as our win condition instead of Reservoir, and that will win us the game once we draw from an empty library, which we're very much capable of in this deck, but Reservoir is a little bit more user-friendly, especially especially on Arena, where we don't get to take any shortcuts of drawing our entire deck, so it takes a lot less clicking to win the game with Reservoir, and of course has its upsides against some aggressive decks as well. And then another way our deck can potentially combo off is with a copy of Emery, Lurker of the Loch, alongside our Paradox Engine. Emery costs one less to cast for each artifact we control, so we can often play Emery for a single blue mana, and then she mills the top four cards of our library when she enters the battlefield, and we can tap Emery and choose an artifact in our graveyard that we get to cast for the turn, and we've got a bunch of artifacts in the deck that we can easily sacrifice. We've got Chromatic Sphere, Witching Well, even Mindstone are all artifacts that will draw cards when we sacrifice them, and then we can replay them with Emery, and then of course trigger our Paradox Engine to untap Emery once again, and then keep replaying those same artifacts out of the graveyard. Of course we do need a bit of additional mana to make that work, but that's why we also have all these mana generating permanents that will combo with our Paradox Engine at the same time to make that combo work, and then once we combine a card like Chromatic Sphere with Emery, we can usually draw our entire deck, find a copy of Reservoir, and win the game. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, of course we're going to play the full playset of Mox Amber, which is great with cards like Paradoxical Outcome, and we've got our 8 legendary creatures to combo with it. Kinnon especially nice with Mox Amber as well, as that means that our Mox Amber now makes 2 mana instead of just 1. Then we've got Witching Well, which lets us scry 2 when it enters the battlefield, can also sacrifice it for 4 mana to draw 2 cards, so it combines nicely with Outcome, as it still has an effect when it comes into play, and can also combo it with Emery later in the game to draw more cards. And then the full playset of Lenor Elves, which will give us that nice 1 mana acceleration. And then 4 copies of Chromatic Sphere, which we can sacrifice to fix our mana and to draw a card at the same time. And then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy, another important card in the deck, as a 2-2 legendary creature, saying whenever we tap a non-land permanent for mana, add 1 mana of any type that permanent produced, which includes cards like Mox Amber, Lenor Elves, Mindstone, and even Chromatic Sphere, will generate 2 mana instead of just 1. So Kinnon can speed up the deck significantly, and of course, another legendary creature for Mox Amber. And then of course we can build an artifact deck without four copies of Mindstone, which combines so nicely with Emery and Paradox Engine as well. Then going over the mana base, we've got a bunch of blue-green dual lands with Hinterland Harbor, a Breeding Pool, Botanical Sanctum, four forests and six basic islands. And lastly we also get to play with Jagatha, the Wellspring as our companion, as a 5-5 legendary creature that can also tap to make mana, so it combos both with Paradox Engine as well as with Mox Amber. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a uh, fine hand. Missing green mana, but no green cards in hand. And then Mox Amber, double Mindstone, pretty good with Emery. Facing what looks like the Spirit Dancer deck, maybe a black-white version. So that could have a bit of removal for Emery, unfortunately. Would prefer to play against a blue-white version. They've got a turn to Stram. So I could play Emery here if I wanted to, probably fine to shock myself in case I need more green mana next turn. And yeah, if I play Mindstone I can't play Emery, 
So just go to play Emery and pass, and I think getting Emery in play is the priority. There's a reservoir in the graveyard we can get back. So, opponent kicks things off with a Sentinel's Eyes. Well, at least there's no Core Spirit Dancer in play yet. So we might have a bit more time to set up. Chapel comes into play tapped. And I'll take four. Alright, so... What can Emery get back? Could even get back Paradox Engine, but not this turn. Reservoir would be my entire turn. So probably still better to go Mindstone plus... Mindstone plus Witching Well. And then what am I looking for? I guess another Mox Amber would do it. A reservoir probably don't need to keep on top. No attacks. Cartouche. Plus one, plus one. And first strike and makes a token as well. So what we don't want to see is a removal spell here on Emery. Take five. And another Witching Well, so we can use that to untap all our permanents. So, double Q to float a bunch of mana, this seems fine. And then there's nothing to get back at the moment, so we'll have to untap our stuff first. Probably could have tapped Amory actually just to target Reservoir in the graveyard, not that it matters too much. Sphere on top seems fine. And then I just sacrifice Mindstone to draw into Sphere. And now that we have Sphere, Emery, and Paradox Engine, we should be able to draw our entire deck. So, play Sphere, untap. And that should be game, unless my opponent has some interaction that I'm not aware of. So we'll sack this for green. Kinon will also speed things up in terms of mana production. Could have uh, floated some mana response there, but I think we're good. And then once we make more mana, I can sacrifice Witching Well instead of the Sphere. Since it'll get to see more cards. And I guess we already have our Wing Condition in the Graveyard to get back, so should be pretty fast. Just do it now, I guess. And yeah, my opponent sees it riding on the wall. The reservoir is just going to get us up to 50 in no time and win us the game. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. We've got our two legendary creatures, a bit of early ramp with Elves and Mindstone. Although we might be facing a turn one Thoughtseize, which is going to disrupt our plans. Instead we see a Vampire of Dire Moon, that one's fine. Play the Elf. And then next turn we get to go Kinnon into Mindstone, and then still have two mana. If the Elf survives. Which it does not. That way it will take care of it. So, probably no point in playing Kinon now. And instead just play Mindstone. And Mox Amber, great draw. So, play Kinon. I guess we can play Mox Amber first. 
Now this makes two mana. This makes two mana. And then I guess we can go Reservoir into Emery. And yeah, all we're missing is Paradox Engine at this point. And can play another Emery to mill four more cards to potentially find it. Murder takes care of Kinnon. Emery is actually more valuable than Kinnon at this point. Ooh, Paradoxical Outcome could be nice too. So there's Witching Well and Mindstone in the graveyard. I guess Kinnon would have been nice with Outcome to get access to more mana. Go for the cheaper Witching Well. And then, yeah, pretty much just looking for the uh, Paradox Engine. So I think we bought them both. And then float a bunch of mana, play Outcome, pick up three. Do we pick up Reservoir as well? Probably not. And then we haven't played a land for the turn yet, instead find Triple Mox Amber. Alright. Play a Witching Well. Probably just get rid of both. And then I could play an extra Mox Amber for an extra Witching Well. Which also gains me a bunch of life in the process. Could I just win the game here? Wasn't actually paying attention if I could get to enough uh, life this turn. I mean, maybe we can actually. How much is this? I'm at 45. Yeah, just play another Emery. And yeah, 53 will do it. Well, that was unexpected, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. A little bit land heavy, but we've got Witching Well as a decent mana sink. And of course, Emery could find all sorts of goodies to get back from the graveyard. Opponent on what looks like the Neoform combo deck. Here, I guess my life total doesn't matter too much, so I guess I'll just shock to have more options available. And then I would like to get Emery in play as soon as possible. So could go Witching Well into Emery and then play Kinnon next turn. As opposed to going Kinnon into Elves. So I guess Outcome goes on the bottom and then I'll mill the Mox Amber with Emery. Alternatively I could have kept Outcome on top and played Kinnon instead of Emery here. But milling the Mox Amber for free is pretty nice, and there's even a second copy, so... Yeah, I just need to find Paradox Engine and we're good. And there it is. So I don't think I'll be able to win this turn. Let's see. Get back Mox Amber. If I play Kinnon, I guess I'll have enough mana for Engine, but not enough to then untap it. But, I mean, this does set up the win next turn, so we'll see whether or not my opponent has Neoform plus Stormcaller. They haven't looked at a ton of cards, just cast an Opt so far. But it looks like they have it. Alright, uh, that's too bad. Opponent's turn for kill, beat our turn for kill. There's always a chance that their Tuk Tuk is in their hand and they can give their creatures haste, so I'll let my opponent combo off here. Although most versions nowadays play two copies of the Rubble Fort to avoid that situation.
So do we have a rubble fort and a celebrant? There's a celebrant. And there's a rubble fort. Alright, that'll do it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a pretty nice opening hand. Turn 1 Elves, turn 2 Kinnon. Don't have anything to play with uh, extra mana from Elves on turn 2. Drawing a Mind Stone would be ideal. We are facing Zelfren Void, so maybe a colorless ramp deck. So, as long as we don't have to face Karn the Grey Crater, we'll be fine. If we had drawn the Breeding Pool last turn, I would have been able to maybe go Kinnon plus Witching Well this turn. Ooh, Mox Amber, that's a great draw. So now I get to play my Paradox Engine. And then even have blue mana for Witching Well after to untap my permanence. And then, what do we need? Emery would be ideal, but Chromatic Sphere is probably still okay here. So we get to make some mana. Sag the Witching Well. And then play Sphere, which will untap. Make some more mana. Play a Mind Stone. And then probably sack Sphere. For two blue. Find an island, sack Mindstone. Find another Witching Well. And a paradoxical outcome. Yeah, it's probably fine. Then if I want to cast it this turn, I would have to sack Witching Well and then Outcome's not too exciting. But I still have a lot of mana here floating, so... Let's see, what would I have been able to do? So make two more mana with Elves, so we've got nine mana. So I can Outcome, picking up... Let's say... Kinnon... Witching Well, Mox Amber. And then I would have five mana left over. Can replay Kinnon for two, Mox Amber for free, and then we would have drawn a few extra cards. Probably keep the elves in play to then combo with Engine. And yeah, my opponent decided to scoop it up here. I mean, they weren't necessarily dead, but there was definitely a real chance we could just win this turn if we managed to find an Aetherflux Reservoir, since we've already cast a whole bunch of spells this turn, which would all add up towards that uh, 50 life eventually. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty decent hand. Especially if Emery survives. Turn 1 Sphere, turn 2. Can play Amber before we play Emery for a 1 mana Emery. And then I get to play Mindstone as well. And next turn maybe Outcome and draw a bunch of cards. There's Mindstone and Reservoir in the graveyard, so those are both useful. Opponent on Black Green with a turn to Paradise Druids. So we'll make some mana. And then Outcome. Do I want to pick up Emery as well? It's definitely an option. Although, let's see. Yeah, I'll only have one mana afterwards. So I probably don't pick up Emery. And then Mox Amber will make one more mana, which I can spend wherever I want. So we could play Mindstone out of the graveyard, or we can just accelerate our mana a bit more with a Lenor Elves, although I guess they both add one mana at the end of the day. Yeah, I guess we'll get our value while we can. 
and place fear. Alright, not a bad turn three. Witching well can help us find Paradox Engine, which is a card we're missing at the moment, as our opponent keeps ramping with Cultivate. So step one, play Witching Well. No Paradox Engine. Could get back Reservoir out of the graveyard as well. That's most of my turn gone. But I do want to eventually get it in place. It's probably worth it. And then... Do we sequence it like this, or do I go Mindstone into Reservoir? I guess Reservoir into Elves is a bit better. Then next turn we'll get to cast a bunch more spells. So my opponent's at 6 mana at the moment. Shadow's Verdict, exiling all creatures, including the Paradise Druid. Yeah, that's definitely a setback, but at least we got the Reservoir in play while we could. So, gotta go digging and uh, try and find some more action cards like Paradoxical Outcome. Probably want to sack my Witching Well. Alright, back up Emery's great. And that will make my Mox Amber generate more mana too. So let's see if they can deal with Emery once again. Emery can get back Witching Well out of the graveyard. And we're just a Paradox Engine away from going off here. Grim Tutor? Alright, I'm sure that can find an answer for Emery if that's what they want to search up. So Black Green, Grim Tutor, kind of looks like a control deck, maybe a scapeshift deck of some sort, with Dread Presence, picked up a second Reservoir. And I don't think I'll be able to cast enough spells to win with Reservoir, or can I? Maybe I can actually. So, Witching Well in the Graveyard. And then gotta find more cheap spells. Paradox Engine. It's gonna be a little slow to the party. So maybe I don't keep it and just try and kill them this turn. I can draw with Sphere, make a green, make a blue, play Elves. I guess I need to draw into a Mox Amber exactly to win here. <laughs> oh wow. Well, we went for the somewhat greedy play of trying to win this turn, and we got rewarded as we don't have to find out what my opponent searched up with the Grim Tutor, which is probably a good thing. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand. Harbor does come into play tapped at the moment, so we might be a little bit slow out of the gates because of that, but if the elf survives I can still go turn to Mindstone into Sphere, which is still totally reasonable. Facing a Sun Petal Grove, so some sort of green-white deck. Opponents got their own elves and a Pelt Collector. Double Paradox Engine, not really all that useful, but at least we've got it. So what do I want to draw here? 
I guess just an untapped line would be fine. Kinon could also be pretty nice here. Alright, I see. Put on a green-white plus one plus one counter synergy deck. And yeah, they added a ton of power and toughness to the board. And luckily we did draw Kinon, so that's not bad. So if I play Kinon... I guess I'll have enough mana to play Paradox Engine as well, thanks to Chromatic Sphere also being worth two mana. And then I can play my uh, Paradox Engine. Should have made blue mana, I suppose, with Chromatic Sphere, since we had a Witching Well in hand. Oh well, I guess we'll combo next turn. It's unlikely that I would have been able to fully combo off this turn since we were missing a way to draw a lot of additional cards. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a chance we can get there. Daxos is acceptable. And a Pride Mate. So I'm taking eight. I do get to gain a lot of life with the Reservoir as well, so that's always nice. Could also activate Kinon to try and find like an Emery, but I think I want to start by casting actual spells first. So play Reservoir. Double tap Q to float our mana. Make it a bit faster. I don't have an infinite supply of blue mana at the moment. I guess that's one potential concern. I kind of like keeping the second reservoir and the witching well. Although I wouldn't be able to play the other witching well afterwards, but... It's still going to be decent, I think. So make some mana. Sack witching well. And then I can play reservoir... And then I can just, let's see, six, seven. I guess never mind. I still have a breeding pool I can play, so I can play Witching Well. And then I can still draw with Mind Stone. How close are we to winning with Reservoir? Probably not super close, but also not incredibly far off. Yeah, I guess we'll keep the Elves. And then this can tap, this can draw. Play the elves to untap the elves and gain a bunch of life. And then we can cast Gigantha. And we're at 41, so that should buy us plenty of time. Another mentor. And I'll take seven, I guess. Forest to draw. So I can activate Kinon. Or I can draw with the Witching Well. I guess I'll draw with the Witching Well first. Should probably keep my elves untapped. Maybe tap Gigantha for mana, actually. Another Kinon and a Mind Stone, so... Yeah, I'll just double tap Q to make it a bit faster. Play Mind Stone. And then I want to draw with the Mind Stone as opposed to making mana with it. And even though some of my spells are legendary, I can still cast them just so we can... Increase our count with the uh, copies of Reservoir. So play another Kinon. Could also activate Kinon. Although we can't use the generic mana from Gigantha for that purpose. We're at 40. So if I play Engine... 
We're at 46. So I need uh, one more spell here, which I sadly don't have. Okay, now misses. Find an elf, although it doesn't count as casting the elf. And uh, can't use Kinnon anymore. Oh well. I guess we'll try again next turn. Although we are kind of running out of uh, spells to play, so finding like a paradoxical outcome would be ideal. At least we still have a Gigantha as a blocker. And I might just chump the Pride Mate this time. So just a pride made attacks. Another elf to draw. So we'll spin the wheel with Kinnon. Misses. I guess we can float some mana. Then activate Kinon again. Misses again, still no Emery. And we'll pass. Ooh, company. Could be scary. Finds Mentor and another Daxos. Well, Giganta is definitely proving its worth in this uh, particular matchup as just a 5 5 blocker. Probably could have kept track of which cards we put on the bottom in the meantime. Opponent's gonna get a bit more aggressive now. So, still chumping the Pride Mate, which is a 40 40 in the meantime. Is there any way I can make it so a top deck spell wins me the game? Let's see, my opponent's got. Three, four additional attackers, so no matter what, they're gonna get in for one damage. Which means that a single spell doesn't win me the game, I would have to draw a cantrip. So I probably don't toss anything in front of an additional attacker. I guess never mind, Kinnon can eat a Lenor Elves just fine. All right, there we go. Paradoxical outcome. Make a lot of mana. And then outcome picking up two elves and Gigantha should be plenty. I guess we can pick up Kinon as well. And I should have gone full control to float mana response here, but it didn't let me do that in time. But yeah, we should have plenty to win here. Opponent does get to gain a little bit of life, but we get to gain a lot of life. Alright, GG's. And there we go, so... Yeah, Gigantha's companion can definitely be useful in some matchups. If we we're lacking a bit of card draw just to get that random 5 5 creature that also makes mana and gets to untap with Paradox Engine. So, yeah, overall, this blue green paradoxical combo deck, I've definitely seen a lot of different iterations on it. Some versions playing around with Uro and playing around with Tamyo as well, and then Jace Wheeler of Mysteries as a win condition. You could play Karn the Great Crater instead of the Aetherflux Reservoir, and then Karn can just search up the reservoir. The downside of playing Karn instead of Reservoir is that you don't get to find it in the graveyard with Emery, and it's going to take you four additional mana to get the reservoir going, which in some situations can definitely make a difference as well. 
but overall I've been positively surprised by this general style of combo deck, although I do recommend running a win condition like Reservoir or Karn to search up Reservoir, as opposed to relying on Jace Wielder of Mysteries, which will take a lot of clicking and might cause you to time out. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.